Okay, y'all, so tonight I'm gonna make steak with chimichurri sauce, some red potatoes roasted in the oven. I've got a bottle of wine for me and Morgan. I don't know if I can get out of this bag one-handed. I'll show that later. But it's a little date night for us. He's about to leave town, so we're going to have a nice little steak dinner with each other at his house. So I've got red potatoes. Um, the chimichurri, I just made this. Let me show you how I made it. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock. For the chimichurri sauce, you want to use basically an entire bunch of cilantro, an entire bunch of parsley. Then I used a half cup of olive oil and a half cup of red wine vinegar. Next time, I think I would start with a fourth of a cup just to get the consistency that I like at the restaurants that I go to. Um, just salt, pepper, minced garlic, and then put it in your food processor and let it go. You can adjust um, the seasoning and the flavors, just taste it, and go from there. It's just what I do when I'm out, so try not to hold me down, feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at those beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car, nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me. Lay my troubles to rest, blow the smoke. So after I've diced my red potatoes, I add a little bit of olive oil and then my favorite seasoning, which is the garlic ranch. You can find this at Walmart or whatever your local store is probably has it. Um, I also added a little bit of pepper. It's very salty, so you don't need extra salt. Let those cook for 15 minutes, then toss them and go ahead and add your green beans. Same seasoning, throw them back in the oven, and now we're ready to start the steak. Just wanna feel it's just what I do. So anytime my boyfriend Morgan is cooking, this magic seasoning blend is for sure in the mix. There's a poultry one, they have a redfish one, they have all different types. So this one we're using steak magic and just some olive oil. We like to sear them in a really hot pan first, then we throw them in the oven and just let them finish off until they're nice and medium to medium rare. Okay, you guys, this is how it turned out. It is so freaking good. I'm obsessed with it. Morgan is loving the potatoes. He thinks they're so good. His favorite part, for sure. What is this stuff called? Chimichurri sauce. Okay, so what do you think? I love everything. What about the sauce? It's surprisingly good because it wasn't very good without the steak. Yeah, we were both a little hesitant because I was like, this doesn't really taste like how I remember it at restaurants. But we tried it with um, a bite of steak and I was like, oh. I bet it like less intense or something. Mm -hmm. It's the red wine vinegar. Honestly, I think less is better, but with the steak, it's perfect. Like I wouldn't change a thing. So yeah. overall, very great good. dinner. Thank you, Morgan, for cooking the steaks. Making all my dreams come true. And we'll see y'all at the next recipe. Okay, y'all. So I left my camera mount at Morgan's house, of course. The one time I take it somewhere, I leave it there. But for tonight's dinner, we are going to make like a bruschetta chicken um, like bake situation. It's going to end up in the oven, but you just need some chicken. You can use chicken breast, chicken tenders, whatever. I'm just going to dice this up. This is the thin sliced chicken. Um... So I'm going to use that, some garlic, some mozzarella. They didn't have the fresh one from my store, so I just bought this brand. Uh, they were out of like the kind that they specifically make, which I love. But anyways, this one's fine. Olive oil, balsamic vinegar, um, some Italian seasoning. So I'm going to use the 21 Seasoning Salute along with the Italian seasoning blend. Salt and pepper and some Roma tomatoes. A handful of fresh basil would be ideal, but my store was completely out, so I had to skip that ingredient. That's why I'm um, adding some extra Italian seasoning, and I'll probably throw in some parsley at the end just for some extra green. And, whoops. <laughs> I also have some leftover green beans from the other night, so I'm gonna cook these up as well, um, just in a side dish for the meal. Um, and yeah, I'll go ahead and apologize. I know I'm really congested right now. I just have bad allergies. So let's go ahead and jump into dicing up our chicken. We're gonna cook that up in the skillet first. Add everything right in here. Top it with cheese. Let it bake at 375 degrees for about 15 to 18 minutes until everything's nice and bubbly. So super simple. I will have this recipe linked for you down below. Faster car, I'm going 
gonna be myself. I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my so you really just want to cook up your diced chicken with some salt, pepper, garlic, and some Italian seasonings. While that is cooking, I'm just stirring it occasionally and dicing up my Roma tomatoes. Once those are done, we're going to start with the chicken down in the pan, add the tomatoes, a little drizzle of the balsamic vinegar, top it with cheese, and let it bake. Drive a faster car. Also, here is dinner. I had it all set up pretty for a photo. Um, but I just took a bite, as you can see, and oh my goodness, it is so freaking good. I was thinking I was going to drizzle about uh, the balsamic glaze that I have from Trader Joe's, but I took a bite just to like see, and it literally doesn't need it. It has so much flavor. So season your chicken really well. Do a couple tablespoons of that balsamic vinegar. Uh, make sure to season your tomatoes as well when you put them on top of the chicken. And you guys, amazing. I'm so, so excited. You can pair this with some rice, cauliflower rice, pasta. Um, there are so many options. I'm just doing green beans tonight. But overall, I am so excited. This turned out so beautiful and so delicious. And I wish I had fresh basil, but honestly, I hardly even miss it. Um, it would definitely take it up a notch, but it turned out so beautiful and so delicious. And I wish I had fresh basil, but honestly, I hardly even miss it. Um, it would definitely take it up a notch, but I am so, so happy with this meal. So definitely give this one a try. I will have it linked for you down below. So next we have pasta italiano as named by my boyfriend. You just need some mild Italian sausage, parsley, parmesan, some grated um, or minced garlic, some pasta sauce. This one I made myself, a little bit of olive oil, any pasta of choice. I'm using the chickpea shells and some fresh spinach. This will be your last call. 20 minutes you've done me. Yeah, I thought I recorded a really cute clip of me putting in these seasonings. And then I realized it wasn't recording. Oh. I know. To start over, let's go buy some more meat. So once your Italian sausage is completely cooked, go ahead and dump in your sauce. You can do a whole jar from the store or your homemade. I would do two or three cups. Mix in your pasta, some spinach, top it off with Parmesan, and then you're good to go. You can also add basil at the end if you'd like. Okay, y'all, tonight we are making a really simple grilled cheese with soups. We're gonna have some tomato soup. I have the Archer Farms sourdough from Target. So I did weigh that out. I know exactly how much my bread is. It's 65 grams. An ounce is 57 grams. So a little bit over one serving, but that's totally fine. And then I used a serving and a fourth, <laughs> um, which is two slices and then half of a slice to get the cheese on here. And I did the Havarti, of course, my washer has to be done right now. I did the Havarti and then the Gouda. Here, I also washed this spinach. So I'm just gonna rip off the stems.
Hey y'all, okay, I'm like in the middle of meal prep. I just cooked this dinner. I had to hop on and talk about it. This is the best grilled cheese I have ever made in my whole life. I kind of burn it on one side and you honestly can't even tell. Beautiful. The soup is delicious, seriously. Way better than Campbell's, hate to say it. The Amy soup is so good. I've never had their tomato soup before. Delicious, but seriously, the sourdough and the cheeses, I used the Gouda and the Havarti. It's so good. It's so good. I'm like, I feel like I'm at a, like literally a restaurant. I feel like this is the best sandwich I've ever made in my whole life. Okay, y'all. So tonight I'm making a really simple, really simple stir fry. So I have these stir fry rice noodles left over from another recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and use those up. I have these uh, that I got at Target. It's just like grilled chicken. I don't have to cook it. It's already pre-cooked. It's just white meat, um, zucchini, mushroom, red bell pepper, just some uh, minced garlic here, sugar snap peas. I don't even know if I like these, so we shall see how this goes. I think you steam them. Yeah, you steam them in the bag. So I'll probably do that, then add it to the skillet. Um, and then my favorite stir fry sauce. If you know of a stir fry sauce, like a pre-made sauce in like the Asian cuisine department that has better ingredients, um, let me know, or like a really good homemade one. I tried to make one homemade and it wasn't that good, but this is my favorite and I have it, so I definitely want to use it. Um, and yeah, we're just basically gonna cook all this up. I have some water about to boil here for the noodles. Make sure you pay attention to the instructions. Where are the instructions? Uh, oh, right there. If you get noodles like this because they don't cook like regular pasta, it's like less time and then you, I don't know, there's like different directions. So pay attention to that. Um, but while that is cooking, we're just gonna toss everything together and get it cooked up in the skillet and ready to combine. So super, super easy meal. Okay, there was a break in the action because Morgan calls, but back to cooking. So once the vegetables are chopped, I get those put on the stove and then I just added the noodles to the boiling water, let them sit off the heat according to package instructions. Then I added in the chicken. It really just has to heat up, so I wasn't worried about adding that in first. I used salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, and some soy sauce, just a little bit at a time until I reached the flavor that I wanted. I did um, microwave, like steam the uh, snow peas or whatever and then I did add a little bit of poultry seasoning whatever seasoning blend you like will totally work with this recipe once the noodles are done I add those into the pot along with the snow peas add about half to three-fourths of that jar of sauce and it was so delicious it made four massive servings I like my like real saucy. It's my favorite sauce. I'm just worried it's I'm pretty, not gonna be It's able pretty. It's pretty saucy. Oh, it is. Okay, too much. No, I mean okay. it's like perfect. Okay, good. I'm just worried. I don't know. It's like the noodles don't look super sauced. I guess you know what I mean. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, good. Woohoo! So good. <gasps> Yay! You're going to be in this video with me? You're in the chimichurri one already. Oh I'm not. I don't feel like I look camera ready. You always look camera ready. Okay, I'm going to put this baby on low. Go take your time. Thank you. Cheers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 